banks of the Mississippi River, you'll find what's known as Mill Ruins Park. Here, you'll see the remnants of the buildings that were responsible for the major industry in Minneapolis for 50 years, flour milling. Among these buildings is the Mill City Museum, built in the ruins of the Washburn A. Mill, one of the flour mills that made Minneapolis the flour milling capital of the world. My name is Marty Reichel and I'm an interpreter here at the Mill City Museum in beautiful Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is a place where they produce flour from hard red spring wheat, which was the wheat from this area of the country. The bread that you had for breakfast this morning comes from a process. What you're basically doing with this wheat is you're grinding it and then you're sifting it and grinding it and re-sifting it uh, numerous times and coming out with uh, what was called in the old days scientific flour. Nowadays we call it white flour. White flour was a revolutionary thing for the people of Minneapolis and the world. Once mills produced packaged flour, it could be sold to everyday people who could now make baked goods in the comfort of their own home. Yum! I don't think that Minneapolis would be the kind of city it is today had we not had the milling industry. There was a certain synergy that occurred here that allowed this place to become the kind of flour milling capital that it did. You had the water fall out here in the river which provided power. You had technology. This is the mill in which they helped to create the gradual reduction process which revolutionized the flour milling industry. And you also had transportation systems coming in this way. People like James J. Hill with his Great Northern Railway, the Washburns with their Minneapolis and St. Louis. All of these items came together in order to create a really vibrant city. You would think that working at a flour mill would be all smiles and chocolate chip cookies, but it turns out that back in the 19th century, it could be a pretty treacherous work environment. It could be a very uh, dangerous business working in mills. There were all kinds of hazards out there that you had to watch out for. For one thing, you had nine floors of clattering machinery, and that machinery was the kind of thing you could catch your clothing or your fingers or something in, and, and that obviously could be a big problem. Uh, also working in the turbine pits here, I know in one instance a, a turbine pit collapsed, sending the worker in right into the turbine itself. Uh, of course he didn't make it. His son was killed next door in the mill. He was uh, buried in uh, grain in one of the silos. Are you getting an idea of how dangerous it was? In fact, the first Washburn A mill was destroyed by an explosion in May of 1878. The reason the mill exploded was flour dust. Flour dust, uh, all these very, very small particles, when they're airborne, if you get enough of them in the air, the air will actually catch fire. What you have here is a flash fire situation. The Washburns had to rebuild their mill, and in 1880, they opened a second flour mill that was bigger and better than the first. They had a good 100-year run being the largest, most productive mill in Minneapolis. But wouldn't you know it, that mill was also destroyed, this time by a fire in 1991 that left the mill the way the visitors see it today. It was a fire that obviously did a lot of damage here. Fire will do that, and that's why we've left this half of the building the way we have so that people can see the awesome power of fire to transform a landscape. After the fire, the Minnesota Historical Society decided to preserve the ruins and utilize as much of the original building as possible to build a museum and education center that would tell the story of Minneapolis. The Mill City Museum encompasses the ruins of a very important mill that was here back in the 1800s. And that mill was really significant in creating the city of Minneapolis. It was here that they developed a lot of the flower products that we take for granted on our tables today. The milling industry was prosperous in Minneapolis for decades and was the location of many of the major millers you know today, like Pillsbury and General Mills. You're probably eating one of their cereals right now. And if you really want to know where your breakfast comes from, the Mill City Museum is the place to visit. My name is Britta Wallstrom and I'm an interpreter here at Mill City Museum in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Mill City Museum is a fantastic museum built on the riverfront of Minneapolis uh, and alongside St. Anthony Falls. And it's a great spot to get the general history of the city. The population of Minneapolis grew exponentially and became what it is today because of the amount of people needed to operate the mills. And if you want to travel through time to see what it was like to be one of those workers at the mill back in the day, make sure to take a ride on the nostalgic flower tower. Flower Tower Ride is a multimedia moving elevator show that really uh, takes you back to like you were inside the old 
Washburn A Mill. And it's a great spot to hear stories from men and women who actually worked in the mill district here in Minneapolis. Another can't miss spot in the museum is an explosive exhibit that shows you just how the tragedy of 1878 happened at Washburn A Mill. The flower dust explosion is a great exhibit, especially if you want to uh, see a little uh, explosion in action. Uh, and it is one where we recreate an explosion in a small model mill. Basically, you have you know a little tiny scoop of flour that's sent into the mill. We talk about the, the different steps that it might take for you to get a dust explosion. Uh, in the end, it's a pretty uh, powerful, exciting experience. Other exhibits include the larger-than-life Bisquick Box, which tells visitors about the impact that advertising had on Minneapolis and the flour industry. The fun continues in the baking lab, where kids can learn about how to bake bread and even get creative with Play-Doh at the rolling station. Not a lot of kids realize that uh, it takes wheat to make flour, to make bread, or to make dough. So we uh, have a display of wheat and flour. It's a great spot to talk about the history of baking labs, and it's also a great spot to get a little bread sample. The Mill City Museum is an awesome place to explore when you're visiting Minneapolis that is sugar-coated with a lot of really cool interactive exhibits. You may get a little wet or your hands a little dirty, all while learning about the history of this vibrant city. What happened here in Minneapolis has affected people all over the world. It's not something that normally you'd realize about Minneapolis. Uh, but the production, the mass production of white flour has changed, you know, how we eat today. You know, it, you might have had a donut, and that donut uh, was a result of what happened here in Minneapolis.